So now having talked about how the spinal cord works basically, we need to talk about what happens when it doesn't work or what, what, are, what happens when there's a lesion. Um, what is the dysfunction that goes on? So um, we're going to talk about some different spinal region syndromes. Um, I want you to be able to describe the ones we talk about in lecture, um, their etiology and which body functions are lost and or spared in each. So a lot of times people, when they're doing the, the study questions, they, they have trouble um, getting a, a handle on what's lost and what's spared. Well, I'll tell you, if it's not lost, then it's spared. <laughs> so you can think of it as like what's lost, but everything else is spared, if that makes sense. So if you lose motor and you don't lose sensory, that means sensory is spared. Okay, so hopefully that helps. And then I want you to be able to list the red flags for Akata equina lesion, which is a specific type of um, spinal region syndrome. So um, lesions in the spinal region may interfere with either segmental function or vertical tract function. So segmental function affects the function of a single spinal cord segment. So um, Signs that you'll get with um, segmental dysfunction are at the level of the lesion, either sensory, motor, and or reflexive changes. So um, segmental lesions interfere with neural function only at that level. Um, so a dorsal root lesion interferes with sensory function in the segment. A ventral root lesion interferes with lower motor neuron function. So hopefully that makes sense, but it's going to be just in that segment. Vertical tract function, um, lesions that ha um, have a vertical tract effect result in loss of communication to levels below the lesion. So um, vertical tracts convey ascending and descending information. So lesions interrupting vertical tract result in a loss of function below the level of the lesion. So above the level of the lesion, you still have normal function, but below the level of the lesion, you lose function. So um, if you're in an ascending tract, sensory losses um, are ipsilateral if the dorsal horn is interrupted. So one side is affected if the dorsal horn is affected on that side. Um, contralateral if the spinothalamic tracts are involved because of where they cross over. So um, in, a sense, in the sensory tracts in the um, dorsal column medial lemniscus, they go all the way up to the midbrain before they cross over to the other side and end up in the cerebral cortex. So um, this, the sensory losses um, below the level of the lesion are going to be on the same side as the lesion. Um, the spinothalamic tracts cross over right away, and then they go up to the... Um, central nervous system and so the losses below the level of the lesion are going to be on the opposite side. So hopefully that makes sense and we'll talk about it with each of the individual syndromes and we'll see if it makes sense. So um, if you have a descending tract um, you're going to get upper motor neuron signs, paralysis, hyperreflexia, and muscle hypertonia. So um, if, you're, if the vertical tract function affects um, the descending tract, you're going to get those upper motor neuron signs. You can get both segmental and vertical tract dysfunction, um, which, you know, that's not fair, but there you go. Nobody said anything was fair. So the signs of segmental dysfunction, a lesion affecting a single level of the spinal cord causes segmental signs at that level. So segmental signs include abnormal or lost sensation in a dermatomal distribution or motor neuron signs in a myotomal distribution. Remember we said if it's in the peripheral system, if the lesion's in the peripheral system, we're going to get um, problems in a peripheral nerve distribution. If it's a spinal problem, we're going to get dermatomal or myotomal distribution. Um, a lesion of the ventral horn, ventral root, or spinal nerve interferes with motor neuron function. Um, with vertical tract dysfunction, lesions interrupting vertical tracts re result in loss of communication um, 
to and or from the spinal levels below the lesion. So ascending tract signs include problems with the regulation of blood pressure, sweating, bladder, and bowel control because it affects autonomic function. Descending tract signs include paralysis, spasticity, and muscle hypertonia and hyperreflexia. If the lateral corticospinal tract is interrupted, um, you will get a positive Babinski sign. So um, all signs of damage to vertical tracts occur below the level of lesion. So um, spinal region, region lesions can cause both segmental and vertical tract signs. So a lesion, this is an example, a lesion at the C5 level on the right that involves the right dorsal quadrant would prevent light touch and that's the right dorsal quadrant of the um, spinal cord. Um, so dorsal, you're going to affect your dorsal column medial lumniscus. Um, it prevents light touch and conscious proprioception from the right side of the body below C5 from reaching the brain and lateral spinal tract from um, reaching the right side of the body below C5 and sensory information from the C5 dermatome and myotome would also be lost. So um, it really helps to take these pictures from the book, look at the different lesions and figure out where the lesion is and where the loss is resulting from that. Um, there is nothing, there's no substitute for a visual in figuring these out. Um, you, it's really hard to look at this paragraph and go, what? But if you look at the picture, you're like, oh, I get it. What is affected on which side? So um, in order to differentiate spinal region um, lesions from peripheral regions, um, it's the distribution that we look at. So peripheral um, nerve lesions cause altered loss, altered or lost sensation in a peripheral nerve distribution, um, or decrease or loss of muscle power in a peripheral nerve distribution. There are no vertical track signs, and um, you have decrease or loss phasic stretch reflex. With um, Spinal region segmental signs occur when nerve roots or spinal nerves are compromised. And segmental signs include altered loss sensations in a dermatome, decreased or lost muscle power in a myotome, and decreased or lost phasic stretch reflex. So you'll notice that you lose the phasic stretch reflex in peripheral or segmental spinal things. So that in itself isn't a distinguishing characteristic. But if you look at dermatome or myotome distribution versus peripheral distribution, that differentiates the two. So vertical tract signs include altered or lost sensation below the level of the lesion, um, autonomic issues, so um, blood pressure, pelvic viscera, and thermoregulation, and motor tract signs include decreased or loss of muscle power, spasticity, muscle hypertonia. And that's if the lateral cortical spinal tract is involved. You also get positive Babinski sign and clonus. So those are motor tract signs. So there's something going on in the lateral cortical spinal tract if you have that positive Babinski and clonus. So a syndrome is a collection of signs and symptoms that don't um, indicate a specific cause. So there are lots of different things that can cause these. There are um, things that typically cause certain ones, but it doesn't mean that that's always the case. So it could be an infection or it could be trauma or it could be something else that's causing these um, spinal region syndromes. Um, syndromes resulting that generally from tumors or trauma include anterior cord syndrome, central cord syndrome, and um, brown saccard syndrome. So anterior cord, if you look at, if you think about anterior cord, um, it is going to interfere with motor control, right, because those motor tracks are in the anterior cord. And here's where getting out the, um, 
the, uh, let's see, oh, I don't have it in this PowerPoint, sorry. Um, here's where getting out the cross section of the spinal cord is really going to help you when you look at it. So I'll tell you what page it's on in the book. It's in chapter 18. It is on page um, 358. So if you look at that cross section of the spinal cord on page 358 and you say the anterior cord is affected, then you're going to get problems with pain transmission because this, um, the spinothalamic tract is affected and temperature sensation and motor control because all the motor tracts are affected in the um, anterior cord. Okay, Central cord syndrome, um, it's going to be a small lesion. You can get um, loss of pain and temperature at the level of the lesion. With a large lesion, upper limb motor function can be impaired. So it just depends. So if you think, so um, look at the pictures in the book too on the different um, spinal cord syndromes and you can see which things are lost. So um, you lose pain and temperature, but you still have light touch and conscious proprioception. So whatever's not lost is spared. Think of it that way. Um, upper motor limb function, um, or upper limb motor function is impaired um, with, a, with a larger lesion um, in central cord syndrome. With brown saccard, it's usually a heavy section of the cord. Um, so it's a, um, it's a laceration or a fall or a gunshot wound, something like that. So below the level of the lesion, you have um, voluntary motor control con and conscious proprioception and light touch lost on the same side as the lesion and pain and temperature sensation lost on the opposite side of the lesion. So um, take a look at the um, cross section of the spinal cord on page um, 358 and then take a look at the diagrams for the individual syndromes. Um, and let me tell you what page those are on, on page um, 368. And we'll talk about those in office hours and we'll see if we can figure those things out. So brown saccard, you can sort of think of it as um, half the things are lost ipsilaterally and the other half are lost contralaterally. Um, central cord tends to be in the... Um, cervical and so that's why it affects upper limb motion. Anterior cord is going to interfere with pain and temperature sensation and motor control. So um, cauda equina syndrome causes sensory impairment and flaccid, flaccid paresis or paralysis of lower limb muscles, bladder and bowels because it, it's affecting those lower um, nerves in the cauda equina. Um, tethered cord syndrome causes low back and lower limb pain, difficulty walking, excessive lordosis because it's pulling on the spinal cord, um, potentially scoliosis, and problems with bowel or bladder control and foot deformities um, because it's in that, usually it's tethered in the lower um, part of the spinal cord. So um, spinal region lesions can affect um, bl bladder, bowel, and sexual function depending on the level of the cord damage. Um, the effects of sp spinal cord lesions on all those different things um, depends on the level of the lesion. But um, sexual function can be a significant issue for a lot of people following spinal cord injury. And a lot of times if you're working with people with acute spinal cord injury, like if you work in um, inpatient rehab, this is a discussion that you need to have with people. This is um, something that you need to talk about because these are all really important things. I was working with a guy, um, I've worked with him several times because a lot of times people with chronic um, spinal cord injury, they're coming back to PT um, frequently. They're coming back when they have another problem that they need to help uh, help dealing with. But um, he has a mid thoracic um, complete spinal cord injury and he said people always ask him oh do you think you'll ever walk again and he goes hey I'm just happy when I can manage my bowel and bladder 
um, stuff. So like walking again, isn't even, it's not even a possibility for him, but um, it's, it's not even something he cares about. He says, Man managing your bowel and bladder, that's huge. Um, that's um, really important to your quality of life. So a lot of times you don't think about it, but there you go.